Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Challengers League. I am Mizell, joined by Beatdown. Likely candidates for game number three on our horizon. Maryville, maybe not the likely winners of that last one, come out 2 0 over Team Liquid Challengers. And that's a heartbreaking one. I, I gotta expect there's a little bit of regrouping mentally for Team Liquid Challengers because they just lost a 50 minute smolder game. I mean, that's gotta feel so bad. You gotta give some respect to Maryville. And how Absolutely. they were able to team fight, especially in that last one. But there were a lot of fights where it was just a very clear understanding of exactly how they need to win. Throw well, everything got... at Smolder. And yeah, that that's the did. that's the that's the the key ticket, right? <laughs> you just throw yeah. everything at Smolder. Uh, I do want to give a little shout out to Subway. Obviously, we have our Subway best of five sidekick. True. If you haven't seen them, Subway has three new sidekicks available to you. They got the footlong churro, the footlong pretzel, and the footlong cookie. Now, I want to make a poll in chat on which one of those is your guys' favorite. So let's go ahead and make a poll of the pretzel, the cookie, or the churro. We'll see which one uh, chat is more favor of. But I, myself, am going to start off with a cookie, as is tradition, uh, because I'm a hungry boy. And I want to see a kindred that has been banned away from Sir Yuji multiple games in a row. So, you hear me, teams. I want a cookie. I want kindred to be locked in. And I want that as my Subway Best of Five sidekick. I really like that shout, because it's actually something Keel is also quite good at. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty, it's it's either at or near 100% win rate when he actually locks that champion in throughout last year. That's something that we could see TLC go for. I'm going to go ahead, you said it was the cookie, right? Yeah, I got a cookie, I'm gonna, baby. All right, I'm going to throw out the pretzel. I'm going to say it's the Ivern, also Ooh. for the side of TLC. The Keel, it's been a big pick for him. I'm pretty sure they're the only team who get it banned against him at this point. So maybe that's something we need to see picked a little earlier. You know what I want to see? And maybe it, it doesn't necessarily fit. But you picked the, the pretzel. Maybe it doesn't necessarily fit the churro, as uh, churros aren't supposed to be cold. But you know what's really good with churros? Ice cream. And you know who okay. makes some banger ice cream? Nunu. And I want to see Kiel on Nunu here. I want him as my churro with a little side of ice cream, because this guy ran the league on this champion when he first came in on wild card and now i want to see him on a last gasp effort a potential last game of the spring split for team liquid they need to flex their strength yeah, i really cannot stress what is on the line here especially for tlc with their backs against the wall but i mean also it's a credit to maryville we said at the beginning of the series how far this program has come you talk about them being in this space for so long uh, the fact that I mean, you go back as far as 2020 lennon they made place third in scouting grounds. They lost to 100 Thieves Academy back when Lucio was there. And what ended up happening was that, I mean, it's been a tough loss. This is kind of that big hurdle for Maryville to be able to knock down these LCS affiliate rosters. And now they are one step away from knocking down the first one in Team Liquid Challengers. They are. We'll see. No switch ups of sides in this one. So Team Liquid back on the blue side for game number three. Maryville on the red side. Let's take a quick look at all those fearless bands. Ten on each side. And Crazy. some big ones taken away from Team Liquid from that last game. And real quick, I misspoke. Not 100 Thieves Academy. It was 100 Thieves next. I think you said next. Uh, oh, then I'm the GOAT apparently. <laughs> and I should never doubt myself. Thank you, Lennon. You're right. You're welcome. I got you, boo. Uh, we're in the first phase of bands here. The Talia is the likely band, as well as that Nautilus. We also get the Rumble and the Cinnabant from Maryville, just as is tradition. The Ash, there's that pick you wanted yeah. last game. Going to be taken off the table. Yeah, clearly showing TLC, not willing to pick it themselves. They're just going to go ahead and knock that one out for Maryville University. And I'm wondering what this last pick is going to end up being. You know, usual suspects. Uh, Varus is probably what I'm looking at, especially since TLC already took the ash out themselves and it's something that spawn actually hasn't played yet it isn't and uh would be a, a likely pick for him i feel like I, I would love to see something along those lines for him but i think first and foremost taking priority in the jungle i i really wanted to see keel be able to pilot something at least aggressive and in carry style performance but he had to kind of fall back and, and play towards his other carries as well in that one. So it becomes a little bit difficult. The Kindred okay. finally not bad through, and I get my cookie. First pick is the Kindred for Team Liquid. Usually, it's not so commonly first picked, but I think when you consider things that are out of the picture, maybe he feels feeling confident about grabbing that one right away, especially because Yuji, we know, also very confident on the champion. 
Yeah, if you uh, leave that one up, it's going to be taken as immediately as possible for Maryville. Callista is going to be locked in here. It was banned away from Scary Jerry last game, and now he'll get his hands on a tried and true pick for him. Renata also still available. And I'm wondering if TLC end up trying to set up something like a Lucian Milio. We haven't seen that bot lane combo come out uh, very often, but you know, having a Milio game when you have two marksmen, I think would really get the most out of that champion, especially because you're only going to be playing at once. Fearless draft, guys, remember? And uh, it's a pretty solid matchup into what's showing right now. I do like the Renata. The Poppy ban, or at least the Poppy hover, was really good in that regard. I still think that pick against Kindred is ridiculously okay. strong. Uh, the Zaya is the lock-in for Spawn, so it's a tried and true I for him. Up. But they're going with the Lovers duo for Team Liquid. I think it's a fair shout as well. It's a relatively safe duo. Zaya being able to extend her life with that Feather Storm. You pair it with, of course, the, the same idea there with the Lamb's Respite. It's a really nice pairing there to ensure that that first kill doesn't go in team fights there from the side of Mary Velvet. Yeah, and uh, that final pickup of the Poppy was definitely uh, seen a mile, mil a million miles away at least. Yeah. The second phase, though, is where it becomes interesting because we still have both solo lanes on the table. Maryville have counterpick yet again. And we'll see what they utilize in that regard as Oriana is the first band towards Roamer. Yeah, so a, a lot of what we consider safe lines are out of the picture for Niles. So I'm expecting, I'm more looking at what is going to be picked for Spyrax. I think that's why we're seeing that pinch of the mid pool a little bit there uh, for Roamer, just to ensure that Spyrax is uh, in a pretty good position to pick something. Maybe he's going to pick Way. Maybe we see the Nico actually come through. Uh, something along those lines with TLC. They, they recognize that. <laughs> they do, indeed. I think they'll yeah. just uh, throw some bands right back. They'll be like, no, I don't N think so. Nico to Spyrax. Uh, we'll see what the champion pool is going to be looking like for both these two guys. I, I know they've had some uh, pretty decent depth of champion pools uh, this year, yeah. but also in playoffs so far. So very curious to see what that goes to. You take away one of the key components, though, to a Kindred Carry comp in the Karma. Yeah, uh, that, that's another good shout coming through there from Maryville. And I'm wondering now, too, uh, what these, uh, what they're Spyrex. going to blind, yeah, <laughs> uh, respectable. Uh, and I want to see what they're going to blind there for Spyrax in the mid lane. At least that's what I'm expecting. Giving Captain America the counter pick potentially, you think? We'll see what I they so. go ahead and grab here for them. Uh, as a uh, big pick that has been still available is the Ari. It was banned away uh, the last game as well in the second phase. But uh, is the lock in here for Spyrax? And it's Spyrax, he's had some uh, pretty monstrous performances on this pick. I mean, even as far back as uh, the other day, or the other week, rather, against uh, Cincinnati Fear. Definitely has a lot of setup with the Poppy as well. It's going to be a little tough, though, because this is the camp. Again, you want resets. And when you're playing into Zaya, into Kindred, getting that first kill, it is really hard. Now, this is a classic for Jenkins. He was once known as the best Kennen in our league. Had yep. fallen away from that because he didn't like the champion anymore. And then they did the little mini rework to him. And he's feeling confident on that one. A classic for Jenkins Ooh. in a pivotal game. And Romer gets his Akali. My boy. That's what I like to see. I mean, playing <laughs> it into Poppy. Very brave. I respect that. That's not fun. But it's a fine matchup in mid lane. And I with Jenkins. Diving in with this Rakan, diving in for Kim down. I drove her. It's just Dive City here. Everyone's putting on their diving caps, their swim goggles, and they're going to be in there like swimwear. Do you, uh, you have to do that where you like slap the cap on your head, you pull the goggles out, and, like slap them across your face. If yeah. you're feeling really Ooh. epic, yeah, but that hurts, so I wouldn't. We're feeling pretty epic right now as Ooh. Niles locking in the TF for game number three against the Kennen. I like that matchup. Yeah, I mean, that one is going to be, that's a pretty interesting one. I'm not sure how that one is going to go, but you're going range for range. You have more setup. There is that's uh, a lot of potential for burst damage. Yuji stuns someone up. You extend it with the gold card, the charm. The hope is that you can just get a big pick and you can blow them up instantly. Yeah. Like, just take your hands off the keyboard. You're not interacting. I'm sorry. This game has gone from let's go to 50 plus minutes and see who wins on execution to yeah. let's see who can fight fastest and hardest and who can win that way. And I love yeah. that we're going down to a pivotal game for Team Liquid where they're flexing into that. We talked to Keel. He said, one of us, either Keel or Romer, are going to be on yeah. carries. Well, they're both on carries this time, Beatdown. Yeah, so that's going to be an exciting one. Again, this comp is really all about going in and going forward. And I'm expecting TLC. I 
to try and close this game out and get themselves a win on the board. Because I mean, you're seeing some comfort picks come through, especially on that top side. I mean, Romer played the Akali early on in the yeah. split as well. It's a potential final game for Team Liquid. Backs against the wall. They want to give Maryville a taste of their own medicine from the reverse sweep yesterday. Now, Maryville on the cusp of booking their ticket to Grand Finals for the first time in the NACL. Spam, who you got? TLC or MU? Who you think is going to take this dub? Come on, guys. Any second. Give TLC some love. They have a chance to bring it back. Don't they, guys? No? Nobody? But I think that speaks to some of the lack of confidence in this team. And we are a developmental region, but we have That's seen true. a ton of growth from this team that has seemingly fallen out the wayside post 15, 20 minutes now. And we've seen multiple series that were in their grasp, even games, uh, rather, yeah. Yeah. that seemingly slip away. And game one of this series is the latest and greatest example. A really unfortunate turnout there. Uh, to start up the series for Team Liquid Challengers. And now, because of that, and some great team fighting and a 50-minute game for Maryville, and TLC find themselves in a really difficult situation. This is it. Your buffer is gone. There are no more mistakes for you to make. It's win or go home. And if you win, you get to go to live finals. Make sure you're buying yes. $5 tickets there. Get some butts in seats, as Captain Flowers would say. You definitely want to join to see which one of these teams is going to be taking on FlyQuest Challengers, the big dogs in our league. But as we get into it now, you see the top side path starts for both junglers. Seeing will be going bot side. And yeah, I mean, bot side is going to feel really good for Maryville for the moment. You're going to have so much pressure. They're running that double range bot lane, and it's the Callista Renata. And I'm imagining Yuji's going to try his best to leverage that. Uh, as well as he can. I'm most excited, of course, about the Akali coming through from Romer. Again, you you have a lot of CC that you have to deal with diving into Maryville. The gold card, the steadfast presence, even the Ari charm, if you get caught unawares. So there is going to be a, a very high bar of execution for the mid of TLC to be able to have an impact this game. Now that we uh, see a little bit of that pathing coming to a head here, we actually get a gank in mid lane from Yuji. So we're going to show his face there. Doesn't end up getting any tools from Romer there, but we will see him actually go back to his side of the map. Keel is down here to hover as a pushed in bot lane under tower here for Team Liquid. It's not a surprise, but you feel good as Yuji, or Keel, excuse me, to continue farming your camps because you saw Yuji show in the mid lane. So it actually ends up working out kind of nicely. Yuji, he wastes a little bit of time, doesn't end up finding anything from it. So Kiel has that option to invade if he wants to because he knows Yuji hasn't touched his bot side yet. Or he can just look to reset and the gold he's earned. I actually see also another little thing I want to talk about here is the ability of roams from Spyrax. Yeah. I know Romer is called Romer, uh, but Spyrax on the R is going to have a little bit more of a forward foot in that oh regard. My God. We also get the 50-50 win by Keel as he'll get his first mark. Uh, GG, guys. 2-1. Uh, I don't make the rules. You get the first mark, <laughs> you win the game. That's how it works. Is that how it works? Results-based analysis? I like yeah, it. literally, it's how it works. Easy does it, I guess. Uh, might as well GG go next. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Liquid, though, they'll keep on the forward foot as much as possible. We do have objectives coming up. And now, Team Liquid, they did secure uh, a lot of those grubby tubbies earlier on in that second game. But yeah. this next game, I feel like Maryville are going to have a lot more to contest in that regard. A hundred percent. And it's going to be tough for TLC. I don't really foresee them getting that early grub priority because like, you can see what Spyrax is doing here in the mid lane. Yeah, you have second win. Yeah, you have Fleet of Doran Shield. But Romer is still getting chucked out big time by Spyrax, and he's starting to fall behind a little bit. Trying to help trade as much as possible as an Akali does in the lane, it yeah. feels like now. And uh, just consistently try to find something there. Now, we did see the mark actually spawned on the Chicky Nuggies of Yuji on the other side. So Kiel, unfortunately, going to be pathing away from that. And it has already been taken out by Yuji. So good regards of that in certain sorts of timing at least for Maryville but again back to the conversation of those objectives yeah and the grubs are spawning right now Yuji's actually recalling I think the pressure from Jenkins on that top side that he's been able to have against Niles it just opens up this opportunity for TLC to get an uncontested first three grubs 
And it's going to be that first step. I was going to say to Grubba get it, but actually, Keel, <laughs> he wants to make sure Niles is just off of his turret, which actually, uh, which I really like. You're delaying that level six, and you're increasing this advantage in the top side for Jenkins. I love that skin so much. But then they came out with the DRX skin, like, right after that. And, and what like, are you supposed wow. to do? Like, not play you gotta it? got to get Come both on. of them. <laughs> and then also, don't forget the new Prestige skin that came out. True, Prestige Porcelain. True. true, true, true. Now we do get that uh, first dragon from Maryville, actually, in the end, as the trade for those objectives. And first time we're actually getting a full-on trade here. Yeah, and I, can't, I really want to credit Keel for that pressure he uh, put up topside. You can see the lead that Jenkins has gotten as a result. Yeah, you trade the Drake for these grubs and for that pressure, but you were never going to fight for this Drake in the first place. So it's really Keel getting the most value out of his time on the top side of the map while securing everything he should. Okay, a nice little 2v2 down here. Scary Jerry going to try to get some Ren stacks, but the Zaya has a lot oh. of give in this early one. And they do get a blade call around to Zyko there too, but Scary Jerry gonna be worse for wear after that trade. And Jenkins, wow, I I just realized he really walked yep. towards his bottom lane and then TP top. I kinda respect the vision, taking a page out of Niles' book, and if that dive happened, we would have been in for a very, very big surprise. We'll see Romer actually feeling a lot more confident in mid lane as well as he takes a huge trade from Spyrax. But he is that level 6 mark, and I think that's where we need to see some of that proactivity from both these mid lanes because they need to, at least for TLC's side, get Keel in a position of power. Yeah, even though Romer has been losing out on a lot of these health trades, he actually ends up with a tiny CS lead, which is what really matters most. A lot of Akali matchups, once you hit level 6, uh, they flip. All of a sudden, you have lots of kill pressure. So now, these objective fights, Romer is going to be able to have a lot more impact. I actually see a hover over on bottom side and not going to actually be able to find anything because of the lane state there. You immediately see pings on the other side, but we got to look back here as Handshake came out on the spawn. Scary Jerry can't get the distance there because Kim down locks him down. Fate's call going to be utilized as well. So ulti is going to be used for Maryville's side, but nothing else sticks. A flash burn by spawn. Yeah, I like that call there from Zyko, taking advantage of that experience lead. No Featherstorm yet from spawn, and because they had that pressure on him, Spyrax has an opportunity to help secure a dive. Spawn is far from level 6 as well. Ooh, oh, oh they my got god. Him. Execution style right there. Spyrax just takes him out, and a wow. double kill to Zyko. I, okay. I was going to say, it doesn't get any cleaner than that. The double kill going to the support, not as ideal as you hope, but all that matters is you're taking spawn out of the lane. He's losing more gold and experience as a result, and you're just further delaying that level six, which is supposed to be a bastion of safety for Messiah. You see how it kicks off here. Spyrax literally just executing Kim down with the help of Zyko there, and it was just a really good time dive. I told you I wanted proactivity. Well, me and you are the first. Yeah, and it ends up being a very successful one. They also get the turret plate on top of it as well. You can see this gold lead starting to grow for Maryville University, finding this bit of an advantage. Elsewhere on the map, though, things are uh, relatively fine. Rover actually has his lead increased because Spyrax showed up on that bot side, and Jenkins, I, he still maintains a pretty big lead on the top side. There's no real way to deal with this cannon except for Zyko's exhaust. There's going to be so much damage from that slicing maelstrom if he's unchecked. It's really difficult and those flanks are going to be so important. We saw Niles actually have some incredible flanks before in the previous yeah. games. Now Maryville actually trying to use some of this. Oh my god he does so much damage. A lot of damage. Spawn. Oh, UG is here to hover but TLC will have to back off the wave. Yeah, Kalista Renata. Alright guys, this bot lane duo is it's just ruthless. Brutal. So, I, the one thing that's worth noting too, I, not a whole lot has gone, gone through the side of, I mean, either team. That double kill from Maryville is nice, but I think if you're TLC, you're not too stressed about it, right? I mean, Keel, you're playing Kindred. You do want to farm. You want to get up there and that Hunter's Mark count before you really get in some of these fights. Uh, Romer, he's going to have a lot of kill threat as he gets to that one-two item mark as well. I think TLC are still in an okay position. We need more of that proactivity from MU, like you were talking about. 
We'll keep trying. At least, uh, speaking of that, they'll go into Rover and Diddley. He's like, guys, come on. I just want to play the game, man. Uh, handshake will go a little bit wide there. We do have Dragon coming up about 45 seconds. The second spawn of the Telegrubbies is on the other yeah. side of the map, but both the jungler is going to be pathing away from that. Yeah, and yeah, it is interesting that we're seeing Keel show up. Uh, this is actually a good opportunity. We did see Scary Jerry back on vision, so it will give TLC an opportunity to clear vision on the spot side. Look at Keel. The way he walked, it's only because of that ward that they weren't able to set up some kind of trap for Scary Jerry. We actually see Keel moving up here, but with Kim down. That's a big connection here between the two that can set up for a lot of success for Keel. There they are. Primary position in front of the Dragon Pit here. They will have a little bit of pressure given to them and by Niles. bot lane of MU. And Niles, he is backing. There is a world where he uses the Destiny to actually show up for this Drake fight. It's kind of what an eye on at this moment. No, okay, he's looking like he's just gonna pass offside. We actually just get a standoff here. <laughs> She's just standing around waiting to see what Team Liquid are gonna do. And that represents a, a curious state of affairs here for Maryville, where I feel like a lot of this series, they have been sitting, holding their fingers together, waiting for Team Liquid to do things and pulling the trigger on the pack of them. Right, it's clear that when it comes to fighting, team fights, these guys know exactly what they need to do, Lennon. So they know when it's time to, when it's probably not a good time to fight. They know exactly who to focus, who to take down. And that's been their biggest strength so far, the split. And that plus their aggression is why they had, when during the regular split limit, 100% win rate when they were up at 15 minutes. They literally would not lose when they were ahead. Their few losses came from early game mistakes when they ended up falling behind. And that ability carries over into playoffs. And it's why they've been able to clutch out off some of the smallest mistakes of teams like DSG yesterday, TLC today. That's the craziest thing, going back to the story how it has how we've gotten here. Maryville have played back-to-back -back series. Team Liquid were in the upper bracket run, taken down in a grueling series against FlyQuest Challengers. And now we have the culmination of both these team splits potentially on the line. Yeah, it's worth noting too, uh, mid lane, Romer went ult for ult with Spyrax. So it didn't end up turning into anything. I think we're actually just going to go back to the slow state of affairs. And yeah, uh, it's like you said, Ledin. A lot is on the line for both of these teams, and a lot of pressure is on TLC right now. Right, this series hasn't gone the way they would have hoped, and now they're in a spot where I, there's only one chance left. Maryville are up 2 0. They want to make it to the Riot Games Arena. It's going to have to be. A reverse sweep. Gonna have to be, again, a little bit of their own medicine given back to Maryville if that will be the case. A slight lead for Maryville so far, but it's nothing to speak of. Again, we said in draft this series, this game in particular, is much more on the hands of execution than I'd say last game was, even though we got to a 50-minute banger. Yeah. But as soon as one of these teams starts to get to a monumental lead, it becomes that much more difficult. There's the Feather Storm Blade Collar combo going to be used here, I'm sure, on the Zyko. Zyko's going to flash, double Ooh. grand entrance. Spawn's actually finding some damage here. Scary Jerry's getting low. He's going to get the bailout, though. And now he's got to get the Ren stacks in time. He can't do it. But Zyko gets a third kill of the game. It's literally support going kill for kill. And I like that TLC instead of going for those grubs to go for the grub oh they actually no i was wrong they did end up getting them but tlc only secured five of them not going for that first six i you still do enough that you spawn the void mites and they got the first brick on the top side i actually kind of want to see the gold difference between these top laners because jenkins has been receiving a lot of love in this early game and i think it's been a top lane game this entire series lennon it really has been. I, it's been actually incredible to watch these two guys uh, actually throw hands consistently. Yeah. And I think Niles has uh, definitely been a big proponent of Maryville's success in this one uh, so far. Yeah. The Aatrox game was actually gigantic. But now we got to get to Brass Tack. Psycho getting caught out a little bit here by Team Liquid. Got to be careful because Keel's looking for kills. That steadfast presence is going to be big, but I don't know if it's going to be enough after that Keeper's Verdict used. Shutdown goes to Romer here, and now Jenkins looking for the Slicing Maelstrom on the multiple members. Here comes Romer. Oh, He's wow. on the tower. He's locked down. Oh, no. Not like this. 
Oh, we're getting a little too crazy with it, uh, I'm not going to lie, but it still ends up forcing Maryville out of the river, securing another mark there for Keel. Uh, I'm guessing because it was on a Scuttle Crab, uh, that should be his second mark. But we're going to see this one again. Uh, Kim down, going to get the angle there onto Zyko, but it's really the setup for Keel uh, to come through over the bush. This is kind of what I'm waiting for here. And he gets a lot of damage, he gets a lot of pressure, and you see the Keeper's Verdict try to knock him down away, so there is no ultimate, there is no engage, but it didn't actually matter. Getting this kill, you should just walk away if you're TLC. This is them getting a little crazy. Just a little bit, and Romer just not expecting to maybe go that far of a distance in maybe his follow-up there. Uh, they were unable to uh, secure that dragon. Or at least the objective under that. And now Dragon rather coming up in about a minute. They need to reposition down here. You do have another Mark to heal on the top side. He is on four now. So we'll have that extra give in his kit. But it's actually Maryville looking for a dive on bot side. They got the Destiny pop from Niles. Now they want to try That's to get the wall people. bang from Yuji. Here comes him down though. They know that trouble is on their way. Hostile takeover comes through. Niles taking the turret here. Takes an extra shot. Lands Respite does clutch. Oh and Jenkins with Slicing Maelstrom. It's huge, but the bailout comes through onto Zyko, and he will still go down. Scary Jerry is looking for the kill on the other side, but he's a little too late. Meanwhile, a tier two taken by Romer in the top side. How about the 3v4 from Team Liquid Challengers? It's going to get them that pressure that they need. It's tough, though. Keel, I, he will have the Hex Gate, so he will be able to get here sooner. But it should still give Maryville some space to try and get vision around this dragon. We got to watch this one again. They want this big ultimate out of Keel before the Drake fight. That has to be the goal of this one. But they commit so much. They try to stun up Yuji so that he can't ult. But he manages to make it happen. And the damage from Jenkins, I, this is ridiculous. This is basically almost all him. Yeah, it literally is, and that's the difference this guy makes on the cannon. But now we're right back to it. Keel gonna get launched out of there in yeah. Maryville. They might just take a sole point for themselves here because Keel can't even get back in the pit. Yeah, that's the beauty of the poppy. Go ahead and say thank you for the leash. And Maryville, they have their big win con. It feels like I've said this so many times this series. They find themselves down a couple thousand gold. Still have a clear win condition. It is that dragon soul. Really, really big. Another Hex Soul on top of that as well. But you look back at the base, and it is burning for Maryville. They lose their outer tower and bot side. They've lost two towers and top side of the map as well. Maryville have not taken a single structure yet on the map for TLC. No, they haven't. So there is that opportunity for Maryville to get a lot of standing gold back into their pockets. But for the moment, it's about TLC and what they can do with the lead that they have. I Romer see that Seeker's arm guard coming through, so he'll have that one-time stasis, making me think that TLC, they're looking for a big play uh, sometime soon for him to go that item. He wants to be able to go in deep. He wants to be able to draw pressure and then hit that stasis button for safety. And it's so funny, the conversation continuously returns to the track record of Team Liquid Challenger so far. They have been in this position time and time again, but yeah. we have also seen them falter from this same height. Now, first items are those big power spikes. I feel like to at least get pressure on the map, we're getting close to those seconds, about a 2.5 plus K lead for Team Liquid. But it's also a situation where we expected this game to be done and dusted, you know, pre-30 minutes, at least in terms of who has the big yeah. advantage. And it feels like we're getting another late game segment with uh, very, very aggressive style compositions. Yeah, potentially. I'd be amazed if this one also went to 50 minutes and we broke another record. But it's true. I, unless Maryville can secure this soul, we very well see, have another long game on our hands. But right now, the play is about Romer who is uh, forced away so that Spyrax can get this bot tier one turret. That's the standing gold that we talked about, Lennon. Maryville are able to get some free one back into their pocket. Standing gold is pretty big. Cut that lead down like to 2k. The Rift Herald is started up and taken by Team Liquid, though. So they'll be able to take down this outer tower, I'm sure, with it. And eyes are on mid lane. It's already down to... Uh, you basically need to spit on it, and it should go down. A Rift Herald charge will absolutely take care of that for you. And getting that first look... Getting that first touch at the objective is really nice for TLC because uh, you have Kim down trying to get in there on this Rakan. You have Jenkins on this uh, Kennen who really can make good use of Fog of War. If he gets a big flank angle, he's able to set up a big team fight with. 
Oh, Jenkins, Jenkins, Jenkins. He wants it under tower here, baby. He wants to go for it. He uses the no, uh, no, 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 x no, no. rocket belt there as a little bit of extra damage onto Scary Jerry. He's hopping his way forward. Kim Down was looking for a little bit of a flank angle here. Spyrax going to be on the top side of the map, but they do find Kim Down out. Scary Jerry getting low, though. He'd be a little bit careful. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything going wide there for Spyrax. Yeah, but I, I like the look. I, I think, especially with Malignant being such a big item for Ari, you get yeah. your ult so often. Just look for whatever play you can. It, it doesn't matter. So he'll have it up well before this next Drake comes through. He's also gotten the Banshee's Veil as his yep. second item, so a little bit more safety played that direction. They did get an outer tower. Oh, Charm actually connecting on the keel, taking a decent amount of damage there. Another charge will come through, though, so a decent amount of damage in all outer structures taken down by TLC. Right now we're a minute 20 till this next Drake. Any last bit of farming, any last bit of gold you need to spend has to be done very, very soon. TLC... They have a good lead. This early game has been going pretty well for them. You can see it. But if that soul goes over to Berryville, a lot of that gets turned around. It's a very valuable permanent buff that Maryville are about to get for themselves. And that's why you're seeing all this focus. Looking like all five members of TLC are already heading towards this side of the map with Jenkins heading mid lane. Oh, it has to be. I think you cannot give over another Hex Soul to this team. A no. team who maybe doesn't have the best uh, late game scaling, but do have summon in, in their regard and a lot of damage potential available to them. We see TLC moving and currently down here. And that's the angle. Again, you want to be here first so you can do stuff like this. It's all going to be used. So big ulti nice. for Maryville. They might just give this one up. And again, we saw Maryville willing to give up some of these dragons when they were in this position in game two. It, it feels really bad, but I think I agree with you, Lennon. You're at this point where TLC are getting really strong. Akeel and Jenkins in particular, we're already seeing glimpses of the damage they're going to be able to do later in the game. So Maryville, besides some kind of desperate gambit, just them getting this Drake seems not so likely. And I actually find Zyko. He's going to flash, but Kim down can't wow. follow him over the wall there. They do force Zyko out of the fight prior to the dragon, though, and that's big. Oh, hold on. Yuji. Yuji. Not an angle. That's really the only way you can hope to secure this. Basically do what he did to Kiel on the last yeah, break, right? Knock him say. away with the Keeper's Verdict. But Kiel has Flash. So, you know, theoretically, you should be able to avoid it. UG spotted out, though, on his transition into the front of the pit. He's going to see this control ward. He's trying to get an angle there with the Keeper's Verdict. Here it goes. He's not going to hit anybody. Oh, he flashes for it. Gets oh, three gets people. Three. And they get dragon again. You got to be kidding me. I'll be down. UG clutches out big time. Maryville, they get the soul for free, and they're going to walk away. That's a huge buff, and TLC, they're kicking themselves for getting caught like that. UG is flexing all over Keel in this series, and he does it yet again. Now Rover caught in the side lane. He's all by himself. They're going to have the flash from Niles. He goes golden. He's got a teammate coming. Jenkins is a big dog, and he knows he's got that dog in him. Flash by a slicing Maelstrom, at least. Charm on the back end of it. Now I think Romer just gave up his teammate here. He is just going to be burned down, and Romer's going to go down too. Beat down. How does this happen three games in a row? And it's all falling apart. I mean, this is more a great play from Yuji. He sees the angle. He sees how grouped up they all are. And it is just the heist of the century. They're going to get that Dragon Soul and walk away. And not only that, this play bot side, it ends up working for you. You are so strong on the map now as MU. You're seeing two items come through for Scary Jerry as well. You see the pressure he's able to put on mid lane. Uh, paired up yeah. with this Hextech Soul, and now Baron is the play. It is the play, and I got to give some praise to Yuji. He was very vocal this year about yeah. being put in the most valuable prospect conversation. He, he said has literally been in the top five every single year, every single split, and he's making it known now. Maryville, they're on the cusp of taking the lead here for the first time, and Maryville, they are getting a little bit picked apart here as Romer found an angle on the flank, and already Spyrax is going to fight the dust. Team Liquid, they turned the head of Maryville, and they now forced them off the Baron Pit. That was a bit of an awkward fight, so you give away a kill onto Spyrax, who also flashed to try and preserve his life there. So you, at least you get yourself a little breathing room as Team Liquid Challenger, and you do still have good team fighting tools. So Maryville, even though they're in a good spot because they're able to secure that soul, 
now it's going to be what's next. This Elder Dragon is coming up soon. If Maryville can't get a serious advantage by then, it is going to be really hard for them to actually commit to it. We're definitely going to be on three items by that time for majority of carries. I am sure of it. And yeah. it's going to come down a lot to execution and timing windows here. This is where Team Liquid can come alive. I feel like they have a lot of safety in the team fights if they can approach it from a they front do. to back angle. Right, again, the big thing. Jenkins, he has that all-in potential there with the Slicing Maelstrom. We saw how much damage he can do. He's at two items, two and a half, and he's so strong. Oh? Jenkins. I didn't scare Jerry. Okay. He did get the redemption out, at least. <laughs> Niles also the destiny. Barely making it out with the destiny. All right, so everything's gonna we're gonna slow back down. Everything's gonna be nice and chill. Again, eyes are on the elder. I, Lennon, I'm pretty sure Genki or Yuji won't be able to get a third huge keeper's verdict to secure a drain. Right? <laughs> Surely a not, right? No Surely. way. No, Surely. No. Oh, I don't think that's going to work. Curse. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't believe it. There's no way it works three times in a row. But that's why this pick for the Poppy is so clutch into a, in, yeah. into a Kindred. You you are forcing them into a Fish and Barrels type situation. If you can get enough poke down early, the Lamb's Respite comes up, and that's ripe for the picking for the Keeper's yep. Verdict. And uh, you got to expect this little give and take. This chess game is going to be oh so important in these next moments. Speaking of, you might have just gotten a rook play onto you. Jenkins getting chased down, getting flashed oh, on Jenkins. out of the lamb's respite. That feels so bad. They will get the trade back on a Spyrax. Keel gets the kill. So that one feels really good. Jenkins really didn't have to die there. There could have been a potential for a Baron threaten on the side of TLC. But either way, you're still able to trade evenly for that one. You see Maryville trying to see what kind of play they can set up with this good lane. I think Spyrex wanted a quick back, I guess. He got his third item after that. <laughs> so, oh, you know, maybe a little bit of that. That's a long back to take for that one, though. Meanwhile, at the base, we've got a Niles picking apart the side lane, and he's going to take a tier two tower here over Team Liquid. I mean, it's just some much needed gold into the pockets of this TF, the subject of a lot of TL's ardor in the early game. Kate Heal trying to focus him down. And now you can see Niles actually has that bit of a CS lead. He's actually ahead in itemization uh, versus Jenkins as well. So he is going to be able to be a solid damage threat as we get set up for this next break fight. And I actually want to see what's the cooldown for that ultimate. Okay, 60 seconds. He will get that Lamb's Respite back pretty much in sync for when this uh, Elder Dragon spawns. So it is going to be tight. Oh, man, beat down. We just got to take a second before a literal game-deciding fight can happen here. Less than a minute for an Elder Dragon. Team yeah. Liquid, they have been in the advantage in so many of these games, in so many of their series, but it slips out of their grasp at the final moment. Here is the time to stamp your foot down and not let the Saints move on to the finals and to push them to a game four. That's right, TLC. Again, the... There is no more room for mistakes. There's only one more chance left. If MU get this Elder, they'll be in a really good position. Try and close this game out through bot side. Oh, a pick here would be huge. Yeah, he got so picked off. Oh my god, he's just dead. No Handshake way. back from the grave. Zyko takes out Jenkins. That is unbelievably cl clutch. That, that could be the game deciding play right there because without Jenkins, that is so much of your ability oh, to team no. fight. Oh no. Maryville, they get the Elder Dragon. TLC, all they can do is try and trade for the Baron. Oh man, they're gonna try to pull the trigger here. I, it just feels really bad. You said no more mistakes are possible for Team Liquid. They made a big one here. They're gonna try to make up for it with that Baron take. Yuji is here though. We've seen him do this again. Don't let it happen. No, it's gonna be Kiel dodging out of that one, but he can't get back in the pit. The Baron is getting low. Kiel needs to get back in there. Something's gotta give, and Team Liquid needs the moment. They need the miracle. You gotta be kidding me. It falls on deaf ears, and Maryville take everything. Yuji said he's done enough to earn most valuable prospect, but he keeps giving us more reasons to love his play. Big clutch from Maryville University, and they have the strongest buff in this game. They can close it out.
Spyrax looking for it. He has Flash. He does not have Spirit Rush. He's looking for an angle here around the corner. Psycho oh just obliterates God. Spawn. Not like this, he says. And it's going to be one last Miracle engage from Jenkins. They get a couple down. Niall's going to get bailed out, but not in time. Here comes Spyrax. Here comes Spyrax. Here comes Spyrax. And UG, all those Elder Dragon buffs going to rain hell on the TLC. And that's it. They've gotten that full A's. They can walk it in through topside. I think Maryville have made it happen, Mazel. No way this ends in a 3-0. Team Liquid, we're on the cusp. They literally just lost the lead in the game for the first time. And we've said it so many times in this series. But Maryville will strike at the heart of Team Liquid. And they'll take it in him in topside. Years spent in the scene. And Maryville will have not been able to make a dent in playoffs against an LCS affiliate roster. And it's looking like they may be able to break that right here and now let in. This program has come so far, been able to achieve so much, especially these last couple of years. Remember last year, Maryville University, they finished, what, eighth place. They barely avoided relegation in summer splits. And now this year, they are one fight away from not only a 3-0, but for a date with FlyQuest for first place. Call it a rise of the collegiate powerhouses. We have multiple collegiate teams waiting in the Provo tournament. We have Maryville making a huge deep run and all these guys in classes, in school, playing CLOL at the same time. Call them superheroes, if you will. Now the Elder Dragon, it's still up. Maybe 15 more seconds. If Maryville wants to try and get one last bit of, of value from it, he got to look right now. But otherwise, I think they're just going to back this one off. Him down. Him down, though. He has the angle. He's got a big flank, but Maryville are moving forward onto the base. Him down might have the saving grace. Romer caught out on the side. Kim down still not seen. First in hit goes down. First in hit tower rather. They are onto the end him now. Kim down. He's looking for it. He wants the know. angle. They know that there's one last gas, but they don't feel confident enough to take it. Kim down. He has it, but he doesn't want to pull the trigger. It's tough. That surely he's communicating with the team. They're deciding whether or not they want to try and take the risk right now. And it's looking like that answer is no. He doesn't have flash. It'll be really hard for him to close the distance and get the quickness off the way he's probably hoping for. So instead, they're going to wait for that cooldown. They're going to wait for another opportunity. Because TLC, they're on a knife's edge right now. They have to be so careful about what fight they choose to take because they are so far behind in gold now. They're not even on the edge of the knife. They have their last remaining fingers on the edge of a cliff, and Maryville yeah. is sitting there with their foot right on the tips of them, about to crush them into the ground. All right, Maryville, they're in that much of a dominating position. Now they're just going to go ahead and do their due diligence. Mid inhibitor is down, top inhibitor is down. There's only one left, Lennon. They're going to go ahead and threaten this bot side. Maybe this is the angle that they could be looking for. They actually have just a couple more. Oh, okay, spawn it gets a little bit of damage there. Uh, actually dodging out of the charm was big. Kim down looking for an angle now on the back end. Here comes the Keeper's Verdict to separate the fight. He's not going to pull the trigger. Romer is in there. We see the hostile takeover now. Oh, oh no, this is the start God. of the end. Maryville find one. They're looking for more here. They're right on the cusp. And those fingers are not holding on much longer here for Team Liquid. This is the last chance here. They're down there. Akali, Maryville, they can taste the 3-0. They can taste... The Riot Games Arena, Lennon, they're about to make it happen. They want those tickets. The last Nexus Tower will fall in the wise words of St. Jerome. What saint has ever won without first contending for his crown? They find one, two, three. They find a fourth. They tear down the non-believers. They make the lower bracket run, and for the first time ever, a collegiate squad will head towards that mountaintop arena in LA. And Lennon, we are gonna get the greatest matchup we could have hoped for. Our first and second seed, our two best teams in the regular split. They're gonna battle it out one last time in LA at land. We gotta look at that last fight one more time. What a way to finish the series. And what a way to execute for Maryville. I, this is just a really nice call. Leaving the Kalista alone to secure that Elder Drake and just taking advantage of the Baron damage to the side of TLC. 
it just ends up being a really nice finish for the Baron coming through here. I can't believe Yuji lived long enough to make it happen, but the bailout guarantees the fact that they're able to secure it. This Baron fight was the kicker, the last nail in the coffin, if you will, and it was a difficult ask for Team Liquid. They tried to flex their strengths, and again, you have to give it to this team. They took some of our top teams to the sweating arena, it feels like, because they were able to push the folds of a lot of these weaknesses we've seen from the top teams. Being able to close it out is a skill needed if you're going to be a champion, and Maryville just had it in them today. And now the question is going to be, I FlyQuest have shown us before if they, that they can scrap with Maryville, but Maryville are going to get another chance to prove themselves again. I right, Maryville, we didn't expect the 3-0, but they have also completed that lower bracket run. Remember, they lost the DSG in the very first round and have been running the lower bracket ever since, and they just finished it. There is only they one did. place left for them to go. Got knocked down early by DSG, but they make the run all the way to that fateful moment. And here they find themselves up against the other team we expected to be at that mountaintop. It's going to be a wonderful matchup. But again, adieus to Team Liquid Challengers who made a run that nobody expected when we were coming into the regular season. We're going to send it away to a little break. And after that, we will have Scary Jerry with our interview. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said, under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. Welcome back once again for the Rally Cry post game interview. We are joined by none other than the scariest of Jerry's, the ADC from Airville University, after booking their ticket to Los Angeles for this live finals. Dude, you and Zyko have had an incredible glow up. It's been a growth of a season. It's only spring here for you guys. What does it mean to reach for the first time for Maryville to that finals? Um, honestly, it feels amazing. You know, I couldn't even fathom like getting this far at the start of the split. I mean, we were even doing like internal tryouts and I was like trialing against like other mid laners and stuff. You know, like I had a pretty bad like last semester. So it honestly, it just feels amazing that we can like bring it back. And, you know, especially like Zyko too. Like he, al he also had a big part to play in just like getting a lot better as a 2v2 in a team. You know, also it means a lot to the boys too. Like Aiden, he's, he's shot calling 
his blank off, you know, and like everyone, <laughs> everyone really cares, you know. So it means it means a lot to uh, to make up for the finals. And I wanted more on uh, the turnaround for you and Zyko. I, I kind of wanted to ask, like, you, you told me about it in DMs a couple, of, like, a month or two ago now, but I want to give you a chance to talk about it to the audience. Like, what did it take for you and Zyko to become the bot lane that you did, both getting all pro shouts when last year nobody was looking your way? Yeah, I mean, if it starts mentally, you know, just, like, acknowledging that, like, we can get better and, you know, that... As long as we're like watching VODs and doing 2v2s and you know really caring about how how we're playing our matchups and you know the, all the little details like as long as we're focused on that we'll get better you know that's that's kind of just what we did but yeah. step one is just the mental part you know like believing in yourself especially after after you know you have such so many rough series in a row and like such a rough semester so just gotta believe so I, I guess the biggest question is, how do you do it, man? I called you guys superheroes in that game because you guys are. You're not only doing an ACL, you have collegiate. I know Aiden Niles was saying a lot. He's like guiding you guys a lot of the way. And I, I know it's stressful because you have to add so many things to your life, not only competing in an ACL. So what has that growth been like for you? And do you feel like you found a system that works? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the team vibes and culture, it helps a lot, you know, because I no one's like dreading going to scrims, you know, no one has like a bad mental after that like stops them from doing their homework and from just grinding out like 1v1s, 2v2s. So I would say it's mostly just that, you know, like we try to keep the vibes up a lot and we try to like hold each other accountable, especially since we don't have a coach. And like we're always telling each other to do, the, do our homework, to, uh, to like watch VODs and to play more solo queue. So, you know, I attribute it a lot to like just the team culture, honestly. Uh, I wanted to bring this one back to kind of what you said earlier, but back to this series as well. You talked about the first step, uh, believing in yourselves. You guys had a pretty uh, insane game to win. We're talking like 500 stacks folder. You guys uh, win a huge. You guys were winning fights over and over again. And like, what 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 are the vibes like in a game like that where you're against such? I mean, a very powerful win con on the enemy team. Like, but you guys still have that confidence in fighting. Yeah, I mean, honestly, running the lower bracket and playing so many games, I mean, we had five games yesterday. It's really just giving yeah. us a lot of experience. Like, we know what to do better in these late game situations after, like, every game we're getting better at it. Because, obviously, we started off playoffs, like, doing really bad in these, like, late game situations. And, you know, yeah. we had a lot of rough games, but we're figuring it out. Honestly, the lower bra bracket run, like, it's been OP. You know, the reverse sweep <laughs> yesterday gave us a lot of experience. Yeah. I'm not going to say it was on purpose that we lost the first few games, but it might have been. <laughs> You know? Not for content, but, uh, you know? I mean, maybe, but <laughs> not. We're, we're all pretty calm. Jalal, like, we, we didn't really want to play Karma, but Jalal was like, it's such a good Karma angle. And then he ended up like 1v9 yeah. in the fight at 50 minutes. Like, yeah. he outplayed the Smolder yeah. as a Karma. Which so, is insane. Yeah, 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 it yeah. was crazy. It's huge. All right, I want to give you one last chance to get some shout outs here before we let you go. But I want you also to go ahead and crowd that camera with all your team because you guys have booked on, your boys. ticket to LA. <laughs> Let's get hype. We're going to see Maryville University take on FlyQuest oh, Challengers, oh, yeah. and it's going to be a banger. Okay. Maryville, congratulations. Let's go, boys. And scary. Any last words? <laughs> um, yeah, my team is insane, you know, but yeah, that's it. My team's insane. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go, Let's go. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We're going to be saying adieu to Maryville University. Thank you, Scary, and we'll see you in LA. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, I'll take it back from him. And what a series. It Ooh. wasn't the five game where I wanted, but it was a clean, calculated win from Maryville University. And it's really cool to hear that Scary Jerry and the, the team, it seems like, really appreciated what they were able to take away from the experience of running the lower bracket the way that they did. And it's got to feel really good for them because now they're going to LA, guys. They're going to be playing at the Riot Games Arena. And uh, Lennon, you got to remind me, I can't remember. How much are huh. tickets again? How do people get so, them? So it's, huh, it's a, it's a little number. Do it. It's, uh -huh. it's something like five, five dollars, five dollars, go. Get your butts in those seats and get to the Riot Games Arena. It's FlyQuest Challengers versus Maryville in person. We just saw Maryville have an incredible series. Please, $5 is all we ask and get your butt in that seat. I mean, you heard him, guys. How could you say no to that face? The link is right below us. And right this is the matchup we could have hoped for. It was our super heavyweight matchup in the regular split. This is our first and second seed. Our two best teams in the league. 
get to fight it out at LAN. LAN, what, what more could we hope for? Like, do you, you guys want a cake? I don't understand. <laughs> Are you not entertained for Are the millionth time here in the playoffs? Uh, yes. It was an absolute crazy journey to get here, and we have to take some time to take stock of how we got here. Big, big condolences to Team Liquid Challengers. They were just yeah. not able to clean their play styles up. They always were getting leads, but they weren't able to clean it up. But this is the journey that FlyQuest and Maryville have taken to the finals. And it is crazy the way they've literally mirrored each other the entire time. You can see it, FlyQuest all the way through the top of the bracket and Maryville all the way through the bottom. to A meeting that seems like it was faded. It really feels like it because I think the the way that all this season has gone down, the fact that Maryville were knocked out to the lower bracket, yeah. and it just seems like fate that they would rejoin here in the finals. And honestly, it's off the back of some really good performances, right? Like multiple yeah. members from FlyQuest should have been in LCS. Here they are in an ACL. Maryville have been an unsung underdog it feels like from last year to this year and came in with so much praise after just a couple weeks of play and we get to see that culmination now yeah we do and i mean player uh, it's amazing to see maryville being that team who turned it around again last split they narrowly avoided relegation and to turn things around in such a short amount of time to get to that spot in the corner of that screen there where they're going to be fighting for first place guys like, this is a glow-up of epic proportions. I, I, I don't even know how hard I can stress this to you. And that's the matchup you're going to be seeing on April 1st. God, I can't wait, man. It's going to be incredible. Beatdown, it has been an absolute pleasure to do this series with you. It has been an absolute pleasure to finish off a cast with you. Again, won't be back casting until promo tournament, but what a series we got to deliver on, and what a weekend for NACL. That means that it's it. We are done. We are going to finals. Next time you see us, it will be in the live Riot Games Arena next Monday on the 1st. And we'll see you for FlyQuest versus Maryville.